In this YouTube video, I give an overview and demonstration of a piece of vintage test equipment, the model 801 resistance, capacitance, bridge, and in-circuit capacitance checker, manufactured by Electronic Measurements Corporation. The Wheatstone bridge circuit is a technique for measuring electrical resistance that was originally developed in the 1800s. The circuit can be adapted to measure capacitance and inductance. A resistance capacitance bridge is a piece of test equipment that allows measuring resistance and capacitance co components using a bridge circuit. Some units, like the EMC801 reviewed here, provide additional features for testing other characteristics of the components being tested. Electronic Measurements Corporation, or EMC, was a manufacturer of test equipment, including tube testers. They were in business at least as far back as 1946 and were still making a tube tester in kit form in 1973. They were based in New York City. They were never as large as some of the bigger test equipment manufacturers, and they tended to go for the lower price range of the market. Some of their products were offered in kit form. Their marketing slogan was, EMC gives more measurement value per dollar. The EMC801 is described as a resistance capacitance bridge and in-circuit capacitance checker. It can perform the following tests on components. Measure capacitance from 100 picofarad to 5,000 microfarad in four ranges. Measure resistance from 0 0.5 ohms to 500 mega ohms in four ranges. Measure the value of a component, such as resistance, capacitance, or inductance, as a ratio of the value of a reference component, from 0.05 to 20. Measure the power factor of capacitors up to 60%. Test capacitors for being open or shorted while in circuit and test capacitors for DC leakage up to 500 volts. The indicator for all tests is a magic eye tube. The design uses two vacuum tubes, an EZ81 rectifier and a 1629 magic eye. It's housed in a metal cabinet and runs on AC power. Looking inside the unit, we can see it's a pretty standard chassis design with point-to-point -point wiring both above and under the chassis. It's an amazingly simple circuit that only uses two tubes. The magic eye indicator was often used in equipment of this type because it was less expensive than a meter. They were also used on higher end radios as a tuning indicator. These eye tubes get dim over time. This one is still in pretty good shape. They're expensive to replace because tubes that are still bright are now quite rare. The 1629 tube in this unit is not as rare as some others and can be purchased for about $20 as new old stock. Some other types are much rarer. Apparently this model was offered as a kit. The workmanship on this unit is not particularly good so I suspect it was one that was constructed from a kit although it's hard to be certain. I'll now give a demonstration of the features of the unit. I'll use these resistance and capacitance substitution boxes to test various values of resistance and capacitance. The capacitor open and short tests can be done in circuit, provided that the capacitor is not shunted by too small a resistance. You set the function switch to the in circuit tester position and connect the binding posts to the component under test. In the open check position, the magic eye indicator should be closed. In the open test position, it should remain closed if the capacitor is good and open if it's open circuited. In the short check position, the indicator should be open. Moving it to short test, the eye should close. If it remains open, the capacitor is shorted. This test cannot be done on electrolytic capacitors. On this unit, the short test is not actually working properly. All of the relevant caps and resistors check good, so I suspect the problem is with the magic eye tube. To measure resistance and capacitance, you switch the function to cap res bridge. To measure resistance, connect the resistor under test to the terminals and select one of the four resistance ranges. Turning the dial, the eye tube should open when the bridge is balanced. The resistance value can then be read off the dial from the corresponding scale. In this case we're on the 50 to 50,000 ohm scale and get a reading of around 1K which is correct as we're testing a 1,000 ohm resistor. 
Capacitance measurements are similar. You select one of the four capacitance ranges and adjust for the eye to open. If you don't know the approximate value of the component under test, you may need to switch ranges. Here we're on the 0.001 to 0.5 microfarad range. and get a value of around 0.1 for this 0.1 microfarad capacitor. You can also measure a component as a ratio to a reference component. This is particularly useful for measuring inductance since the unit cannot otherwise measure inductance directly. We set the range to comparator and connect the component under test as usual and the reference component to the standard binding posts. When the eye opens, the dial reads the value of the reference component as a ratio of the component under test. Here we have a 500 ohm resistor under test and a reference 1000 ohm resistor and we get a ratio very close to 2 as we would expect. You can perform a couple of other tests that are relevant for capacitors. On the two highest capacitance ranges, you can adjust the power factor control for a maximum eye opening and read off the power factor. This is an indication of the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor. I didn't have a cap handy with a high ESR, but I can simulate it by putting a 100 ohm resistor in series with this 2 microfarad capacitor. We measure a power factor of about 10%. Finally, the leakage test measures the leakage current through a capacitor at various voltages. Electrolytic and paper caps tend to exhibit high leakage as they age. To test leakage, set the range to either paper mica test or electrolytic test depending on the type of capacitor. Then adjust the voltage control up to the rated voltage of the capacitor. The eye should open if the leakage is within acceptable limits. Electrolytic capacitors can take up to a minute or so for the eye to open even longer if they have not been used for some time. This is because electrolytic capacitors rely on a chemical reaction to form the insulating layer. Old capacitors that have not been used for a long time may need to be reformed by slowly increasing the voltage applied to them. The leakage test mode is also useful for reforming these old capacitors. Note that the voltages applied during the leakage test are somewhat dangerous, direct current at up to 500 volts. You want to avoid touching the leads and should turn the voltage control down to zero to discharge the capacitor after testing. Otherwise it would be left charged at a high voltage for quite some time. I bought this unit on eBay in 2006 along with an EMC802 signal tracer from a school that was getting rid of old test equipment. I replaced the paper capacitors and some of the electrolytics as these tend to get bad in equipment of this age. It didn't have a manual but I was able to find one on the internet which had both operating instructions and a schematic diagram. It seems to be working well except for the shorts test as I mentioned earlier. While at one time it was state-of-the-art, most modern low-cost digital multimeters can measure resistance and capacitance much more quickly and accurately than this unit. The leakage test is one that's not provided by modern test equipment, although it's less important than in the past as electrolytic capacitors tend to be more reliable and work at lower voltages than in the days of vacuum tubes. Companies like Hewlett-Packard made high-end RLC bridges that were much more accurate and also much more expensive than this unit. This one would be aimed at a small laboratory or radio and TV repair shop. It would have been a common piece of equipment from about the 1940s into the 1970s. I also have in my collection a Heathkit IT11 capacitor checker, which has very similar features to this unit. I've also made a YouTube video describing it. I've also made a video on the EMC802 signal tracer and generator that you may want to watch. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage amateur radio and test equipment.